Mr. Wesley Granberg Michelson, welcome to Erdman's and thank you for being with us today. Good to be here. Thank you. Um, you've led a remarkable life. You served as General Secretary of the Reformed Church in America. You were founding or managing editor of Sojourners Magazine. You worked closely with Senator Mark Hatfield during the Vietnam War. And you've worked with Christian churches together in the USA, the Global Christian Forum, and Call to Renewal. And you've also raised a beautiful family with your wife, Karen. We're very pleased to publish your life story, Unexpected Destinations, an Evangelical Pilgrimage to World Christianity. So to begin with, can you tell us a little bit, or the story behind your somewhat unusual last name, which you talk about in your book? Well, you know, uh, when Karen and I were married, we began to say, how are we going to deal with our name? Because that was a time when, especially in uh, the circles where we were, in evangelical uh, social action community, mm -hmm. um, there were new questions about uh, feminism and about the, the role of women in the church were being raised. And then part of that always had to do with, well, when a couple gets married, does the wife just take the uh, name of the husband, and so Karen become Karen Michelson, uh, and that's the end of it. Um, or, or do you do something that sort of indicates that that um, you know this is a union of two people who um, each have their own identity? Mm -hmm. So uh, it was when we moved to Missoula, Montana, that we decided um, if we are ever going to act on this, this is the time to do it. And and we thought putting our two names together. Uh, expressed what we really believed, namely mm -hmm. that we're two people, but we've become one, mm -hmm. and that um, this was a, you know, a small way of at least uh, indicating that. But mm -hmm. it's it's created uh, countless problems with uh, computers and with you mm -hmm. know every time you give your name to someone and try to explain it, or every time mm -hmm. I get a plane ticket and uh, mm -hmm. try to try to go over. You know, but when I tell the story behind it, uh, there was a time when I uh, was getting a flight out of Newark Airport and the person there with the United Airlines was trying to figure out my name. And I explained it all to, to her and she said, so you mean that you took your wife's name and added it to your last name? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah. She said, that's unbelievable. She called her colleagues over and said, let's look, look at what this guy has done. And then mm -hmm. she says, I'm upgrading you to first class on this flight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it speaks very well of your relationship. We have, so. a, we have, a, we have a wonderful relationship. It's good to hear. Um, and we, everyone asks, what are your kids going to do? Uh -huh. We have two kids. Uh, one of them we named John Christer. So this mm -hmm. is John Christer Granberg Michelson. So he's got enough names to start his own law firm. <laughs> and um, yeah. he go, so he goes by JK and then our daughter Cars. But uh, okay. we figure. When they get to that point in their life, they're both really smart, and they'll figure this out. <laughs> yeah, three hyphenated names. <laughs> well, you're a natural and gifted leader who focuses on reforming and renewing organizations and institutions. So we just wanted to ask you, what are some of the highlights of your time as General Secretary of the RCA? You know, um, one of the highlights uh, was certainly when we adopted the Belhar Confession. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, first time in 375 years of, of history where the Reformed Church in America has adopted a, a new confession. And for a denomination like ours that takes confessions really seriously, this was a, this was a huge historic deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it meant that we were saying that the issues of racial reconciliation and justice and unity were uh, at the heart of our, our faith as mm -hmm. well as what our three traditional confessions have proclaimed. And so that was when, when Synod finally got to that point after a long process of, of many years mm -hmm. of, of uh, agreeing to do that. Um, and when we saw the way in which the church around the world responded, when we saw how friends in South Africa were watching our Synod as it was being streamed live mm -hmm. and they were waiting to see what we would decide. And mm -hmm. We hear the kind of words that came. That was a, mm -hmm. That, that was certainly a that was certainly a high point. Okay, did that come out of your time with the WCC? 
Uh, not directly, uh, but there were friends from the Royal Council of Churches uh, that uh, I knew and relationships that uh, certainly encouraged that, okay. that process. But uh, this had actually come out of the RCA's long relationship with the church in South Africa, going back to my predecessor, Ed Mulder, and the struggle against apartheid. So it, okay. it had roots that went back about 25 years. Okay. Uh, would you also talk a little bit about the thinking that went into the title of your book, Unexpected Destinations? In many ways, you've come a long way from where you started, which was a conservative, evangelical, suburban, middle-class, white family. Mm -hmm. So in what ways does this origin contrast starkly with your destination, and how was it unexpected for you? Well, I think my life has really been filled with ending up in places I never would have imagined. And I think that's come basically uh, from trying to keep asking the question, uh, what about Jesus? Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean uh, to follow Jesus? Uh, and the, the thing that my background gave me was a, a sense that uh, uh, the relationship of one to be a follower and disciple of Jesus it determines should determine everything in one's life, mm -hmm. and that's what that that conservative evangelical background uh, kind of put into my DNA. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it it led me to places that were often very much against the the subculture uh, that that, mm -hmm. that I was raised in, and beginning with things like the Vietnam War and my work with Mark Hatfield, uh, it was a highly unpopular position at that point for any evangelicals to question uh, the morality of our involvement in Vietnam. And, okay. uh, and um, you know, and that, that put me in a place I, I certainly, a destination I never would have expected. Mm -hmm. My, my, uh, my then journey uh, with Church of the Savior in Washington, D.C. introduced me to uh, ways of deepening one's relationship to God, uh, particularly through uh, the tradition of Catholic contemplative spirituality. I ended up at a monastery for about, mm. uh, at one point, living there for about five, six weeks. Mm -hmm. And, and um, a, a place that would have been unimaginable from when I started. But yet, right. it, was out of, it was out of that same quest. Uh, how do you ground your life in God's love? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and, and likewise, um, when I went to the World Council of Churches, it was um, something that I never could have imagined, but but came through, uh, you know, another set of, of of really unpredictable circumstances. Which, when you look back on it, I think you have to say, well, this this is simply the work of grace in in one's life that really is beyond you. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, you know, there isn't there isn't any plan that you could have figured out and sure. charted. It's, uh, it's more than that. And finally, in coming to the RCA, um, I mean, I, uh, I didn't even know what the Reformed Church of America was until I went to Hope College, and even then I didn't know the difference between it and the Christian Reformed Church. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it, it was highly unlikely that I ever would have ended up in a position of, uh, of leading a, you know, a mainline denomination like the RCA. Yeah. But you know, in, in retrospect, it seems like the other parts of my journey prepared me perfectly for, for that task, and that's how, I, mm -hmm. how, how I've experienced it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure it's amazing to look back now and think through that whole process mm -hmm. and to see God's hand in mm -hmm. it. It really is. Um, you also mention repeatedly in your book the importance of spiritual retreats, mm -hmm. prayer, journaling, and other devotional practices. Do you describe the impact that they have had on your vocational and spiritual journey? Yeah, you know, I, I, I just, in my own experience, uh, I've come to feel that um, the most important things that you do in your outward journey have to have roots in your inward journey. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, so, it's been so much the case in American Christianity that we make this dichotomy between people who place all the emphasis on one 
one's spirituality and one's having, having the right relationship with Jesus. And then those who place all the emphasis on our action in the world and our mm -hmm. work for justice, our involvement uh, to remedy uh, uh, you know, all, the, all the things that are so wrong in the world today. And what I experienced the first beginning of Church of the Savior is that it, it, it's impossible to, to have those things separate and for, for them to make any sense. And that, and that what you do externally uh, in, in your witness, in your mission, has to be rooted deeply in your interior life. Mm -hmm. and, and that it's only, by, it's only by really taking the time and the space to develop that uh, inward sense of, of knowing the way in which you are loved by God and knowing your true sense of belonging, mm -hmm. that, that you then have the ability to be effective in, your, in, in, in the ways in which you will work for the purposes of God's justice uh, and God's love in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came to um, discover a set of practices <clears throat> that were very alien to my upbringing, but things like journal writing, things like going on silent retreat, mm -hmm. um, taking that time apart, uh, in, in contemplative prayer, um, that th those simply became life-giving for me. And that in, in a life that is so busy with the uh, press of so many things to do, mm -hmm. um, I kept learning that it's, it's crucial to try to take the time to first deal with your inward life and to, and to see that your, your inward relationship to God is solid and strong if you're going to be equipped in whatever you're called to externally. Mm -hmm. So that's that that's again what I what I kind of discovered, and I think I, I never would have been led to the places I've ended up if um, if I hadn't learned to try to take the time apart to to, to listen and to mm -hmm. be attentive to what was going on inside of me in the midst of everything that was going on in the outside. Right.